Hey everyone, welcome back to the shop. Now for the past few weeks, I've been working on this jewelry box made of cherry and some gorgeous quilted maple. Unfortunately, I've had to put this project on hold due to some supply chain issues getting the hardware. So it's gonna be a few weeks and I had to come up with something else to do. So my first thought was I really need to spend this time cleaning and reorganizing my shop. It desperately needs it. I mean, this place is a mess. But then I thought, how about doing a fun challenge? And I said, yes, I like that. Let's do that instead. So the rules of this challenge are pretty simple. Design a project centered around this piece of figured maple left over from the jewelry box and incorporate at least one new technique. First, I have to address the large crack that runs almost all the way down this board. So I'm using, you guessed it, epoxy. Since this maple has so much figure to it, I don't want to draw even more attention to such a small piece by using a bright colored epoxy. So by using a more muted color in the epoxy, I'm allowing the figure of the wood to stand out and be the center of attention. It is wonderful to be the center of attention. And once that epoxy is cured, I'll run it through the drum sander to get everything smooth. Now with the board stabilized and I know it's not going to fall apart on me, I can start working on the next part of this challenge, which is installing some bow tie inlays. Over at the table saw, I'll take some scraps of walnut and cut it down into some small pieces. I'm going to use these pieces to create some bow ties to install along the crack. I've never used bow ties before. I've always been a double Windsor or even a bolo man myself, so I figured this is a great opportunity to try out something new. Now, sometimes these are also called butterfly keys. I'm not sure if either one is the right answer, but I've heard both used, so let me know in the comments which one do you use. Is it bow ties or butterflies? I don't have one of those acrylic templates that you can use to create bow ties using your router, so I'm making mine at the bandsaw. To do this, I'm using a dovetail jig that I made using a scrap of plywood with a dowel in it. The dowel serves as a stop. I cut to the halfway point on one side and then flip the piece over and cut to the halfway point again. Do this on both sides to get that uniform bow tie shape. The bandsaw is going to leave a fairly rough finish on these keys. So once I'm done cutting them out, I'll take them over to my workbench where I'll use my chisels and make very light paring cuts. This removes all of the rough cuts from the bandsaw and leaves a smooth flat surface on the bow ties. I'm using some blue tape and some super glue to hold these bow ties in place so I can cut around them with my marking knife. And now unlike the hair on my head, these keys aren't going anywhere. I'll trace around each of the keys with my marking knife, being careful to cut through both layers of tape so that I cut into the wood below. Then I can remove the tape and use my palm router to remove the majority of the waste. The goal here is to get as close to the line as possible without touching it or especially going over. This will make the next step much easier. Now I can move on to my chisels and start removing the rest of the waste. If you did a good job with the router, you should be able to put your chisel directly into the cut made by your marking knife, and then a few taps of the mallet will leave a clean mortise for your inlays. One of the great things about trying out new techniques on these type of challenges is if you completely screw up and have to scrap the project, at least it wasn't on a $12,000 table for a client. This takes away some of the stress about making a mistake trying out a new technique, while the aspect of the challenge has you more invested than you would be if you were just practicing on some scraps that were just going to go in the trash. And since we're talking about mistakes, the installation of these bow tie inlays didn't go perfectly. I ended up with a few gaps that I'm going to have to address. Something I learned very early on in woodworking, all woodworkers make mistakes. However, the really good ones know how to fix their mistakes. So that's something I'm always trying to get better at, is how to repair the mistakes that I make. I saved some of the cutoffs from when I was making the bow ties. With a little bit of glue, I can put these in place and fill in the gaps. After a bit of sanding, you can't even see that there was a gap there. Now I can take my maple board over to the table saw and cut off the rough edges and make sure everything is nice and square. I also need to cut off a small one inch block from the bottom of the board. Then I'll cut a couple of strips from a piece of walnut so that I can use in my glue up. Now this glue up is a little tricky since I have this one inch piece of maple that I'll have to get in the proper position. 
So I'll start with the larger piece, apply glue to both sides, and then sandwich it between the two pieces of walnut. Then I can glue the smaller block into place, make sure that the spacing is correct, and then I'll use my square to make sure that everything is properly aligned. While the glue is drying, I'll cut down another piece of maple and another piece of walnut. I need to add a small rabbit to this piece of maple, so I'll do that at the table saw as well. Now I can glue these parts together. I'll apply the glue to the maple and I'm going to use the rabbit to hold this in the proper position. Once I've got it in place, I'll apply a couple of clamps to hold it until the glue dries. And once the glue's dried, I'll take all my parts over to the table saw and trim all the ends flush. keep this piece from looking so blocky, I'm going to add some large bevels to the sides and the best place to do this is over at the table saw. It can be tricky and somewhat dangerous trying to make this type of cut using just your table saw fence. So I'm going to use my miter spline jig that rides along the fence to secure the workpiece. And once it's clamped in place, it's perfectly secured so I don't have to worry about it tipping while I'm making the cut. This also allows my hands to be behind the jig and far from the blade while I'm making the cut. Now even if you have no intention of getting into hand tools, I recommend every woodworker have at least a block plane. This little plane is one of the most used tools in my shop. Here I'm using it to remove all of the sharp edges and leave a small chamfer on the edge of the workpiece. Once all the edges are taken care of, I do a quick sanding up to 180 grit. For the finish, I'm going to use what has to be the smallest bottle of Rubio in existence. I mean, look at this thing. Absolutely tiny. That's what she said. <laughs> Well, this is the first time I've used Rubio before, which is why I have this little tiny sample bottle. However, this bottle was actually enough. I still have two-thirds of the bottle remaining after finishing this project, so this stuff really does go a long way. Simple challenges like this are great ways to improve your woodworking skills. It has you step outside of your comfort zone and try something different, whether it's a new design or a new technique, or even just working with new material that you've never used before. So I try to incorporate these challenges from time to time to make sure that I'm constantly learning new techniques and improving my skills. Because the only sure way to get better is to actually get out in the shop and build something.